Hello and welcome back. Still, uh, what still? Still painting cycling, yes. But it is the, um, the men are now done. You'll see the video um, is up already of the last stage on the Champs-Elysees. Uh, it was a wild one. So I suggest you also go look at all of the um, paintings of, well, the whole tour, because it was a wild tour too, over on the blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com. You kind of read as you go through all the posts and look at all the images, you also can uh, get the story of the race. But now we are on to the Tour de France Femme. This is the second edition of the uh, reincarnation of the women's race. So pleased to see it back. Um, there's a book written by a woman that I've got had the pleasure to have gotten to know. Oh, okay. So I was trying to figure out somebody's number here. Okay, so it is 133. Um, but I've gotten to know um, Catherine Bertin. She actually wrote the um, forward from the book I wrote, I did of my artwork and paint and my paintings and writings on the uh, world championships when they were held in Richmond, Virginia. But she has a book out called Stand, and I strongly recommend reading it. And it is all about her efforts to um, bring back the Tour de France for women, starting first with La Course, which ran for two years, was one stage on two occasions, just racing before the men on the Champs-Élysées. And then when it restarted last year, they continued that by starting the race, but it was actually eight stages as the, the intention is for the race to remain. Eight stages going forward. Um, but that first year, and so I assumed incorrectly, you know, maybe I should read some of this stuff before I make decisions about what's gonna happen. But, um, I thought the race, I, thought, I mean, it made perfect sense. I've got the whole crowd and the infrastructure and everything else there to always have the women start on the Champs-Élysées before the men come in. Because the, they like to bring the men in for the final stage in the early evening hours, so there's plenty of time. Or maybe it just takes that long to block off some of the busiest thoroughfares and one of the busiest cities in Europe. So on to what I'm working on right now. So I kind of blew it. My idea was to have these two are kind of doing a slow motion sprint and then the heads of all the people who kind of um, didn't vie for the sprint points behind them here, but you know, best laid plans, right? <laughs> We'll still stick a couple of heads in here. We'll just change the space a little bit. Now that's one of the things about being an artist is uh, unlike a photographer, I'm not saying they're not artists, um, is I can move things around a little bit because after all, the point here is that these two rode off the front of the group and not exactly how far ahead they are. So that gives me what I was, oh here, let's do one more. They're actually a little bit further back, but who's to know? In all things art, it, um, nobody will ever see what you're painting from. I mean, we have no idea what Van Gogh's sunflowers actually look like. <laughs> we just know what the painting is. Point being, you know, make the painting work, make the image be powerful. I'm 
this wasn't really much of a sprint. Now the three people had already gone, so the major points were gone. But in a second, that jersey will be obvious. But Lada Kopecky actually holds three jerseys at the start of the day. She doesn't anymore. The virtual lead in the King of the Mountains has moved on to someone else. Excuse me, Queen of the Mountains. But um, she still holds the yellow jersey and the uh, green jersey. Lisa virtually holds the green jersey. And <clears throat> So, in the green jersey point, she's just picked up fourth in the sprint, which will add to her green jersey total, which may be her more, more of her objective, at least on the day. She also wears the yellow numbers. Her team is in the t lead in the team race as well. So, I believe it's the top th the time combined time of the top three people on each team are taken to um, decide the, the um, what am I trying to say? Well, trying to decide the team competition. I think it's three, it may be four, maybe everybody. But anyway, the, the point being that her team has the best combined time of the Tour de France Femme thus far. And so she wears a yellow number and the team wears a yellow hat, yellow hat, yellow helmet. Now, you know X, their helmet color is also yellow. The Jersey kit is usually yellow with red, but in the tour, you have to change your kit enough to make the yellow jersey, if yellow is the dominant color, of course, of your team kit, you have to change it enough to um, make the yellow jersey more distinguishable. In the men's race, the green jersey has changed to a much more subdued green, and the green is the same color as you know X's color and I know I've talked about this while painting the men's race and it's interesting to me that they were not required to change that but you know X both in the men's and women's race because their kit is exactly the same more and more even though they may have some different sponsors um More and more of the teams have both a men's and a women's team, and those kits tend to be the same. So UNO X does, Jumbo Visma, EF Education, they have different sponsors, but they still have the same basic kit. Um, While it uses a different first name, so is Sudal Quickstep in the men's team and AG Insurance Quickstep, uh, Sudal Quickstep in the women's, they have the same kit, just some different signage, as one would expect given the difference in the names. I know, TMI. So in this sprint, you can call it that. So the title is Slow Motion Sprint. Since the woman in second, who's actually wearing the green jersey because Kopecky is in the yellow jersey, was close, but decided not to vie for sprint points. She's right here. <laughs> and so... Kopecky kind of rolled out like, oh, this is going to be a sprint, and sort of ramped up her speed. But um, 
since um, Ashley didn't fly out, it was sort of more of a roll through. You know, got enough space to make sure it's mine and then nobody challenged it, so I'm not gonna expend any more energy than I need to. So that's the title, Slow Motion Sprint. So now we'll just, it's actually going to be a very simple painting. We need to work on some hair tones, hair colors. It's unlike the men's peloton. You see a lot more hair. <laughs> there was a few guys, most particularly the uh, American champion who crashed out early, Quinn Simmons, wearing the man bun, and a few others who have long hair, in the, but you don't really see much hair in the men's race, so it becomes less of a factor in the painting, but for the women, It's part of the image. <laughs> Reminded me of my long departed grandparents on my father's side. Now I'm of an age where long hair was quite controversial. And I wore long hair. What's funny is my short hair now is probably longer than my long hair was then. But my dear sweet grandmother would always say, I thought that was whichever cousin, female cousin, coming up the walk. I didn't realize it was you. And it's like, well, grandma hair length is not the determining factor. Never had the balls to say that to her. I think my father would have loved it if I had. <laughs> but um, it's just funny the way hair has changed over the years. And now the oft times the longest hair is worn by athletes. I ran track for a little bit in middle school and was quite fast. Had the best times in a lot of the events. So we go to the first event and the coach had told me to cut my hair and I politely refused. And so we go to the first event and he doesn't race me in any of the events, particularly the ones I, I mean, he didn't race me in any of them, but most definitely not the ones I did not race me in the ones I was fastest in. And we lost, the team did not win those events. And I was like, why didn't you race me? But she responded, well, you didn't cut your hair. And I said, well, apparently you don't want to win races and I'm not going to run for you and quit. <laughs> Shortly thereafter, I discovered bike racing. I had a substitute teacher, same, he was actually, the, not substitute, excuse me, student teacher. Happened to be the student teacher to the track coach. And he would ride his bike to work every day and he was racing bikes and I was fascinated by it. It's about the same time I discovered Eddie Merckx, who was winning everything he showed up for at that point. And uh, thus began my lifelong love of uh, bike racing. I see a line I missed. So this is just about done, enough to remind you that I will um, be posting one of these every day for the rest of the uh, Tour de France film, which goes through next Sunday. Plus, if you go to the YouTube channel that you're at, you can go back and look at all of the paintings from the men's race. And also, if you go over to that end, if you go over to my cycling blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com, you can read about the whole race 
in, a, in essence, what is a picture book. And, um, oopsies, it's all a water spot and now created more trouble than it's worth. Um, you can read about the whole race, the same is true for the women's race. And that while you're there, you will see the opportunity to click through the direct links to my website, gregleach.com. And there you can purchase any of the paintings that you would like, assuming they haven't sold already. I think I've sold about a third of all of the paintings of the men's race, which is down from my normal average. But, you know, streaming has changed things a little bit. which I understand everybody wants to get streaming subscriptions, but not broadcasting these races means people can't find them accidentally. All right, well, thanks for taking the time to watch. I appreciate it. I hope you will subscribe if you're not. Love to know what you think about these works. Leave me a comment. I'll try to respond to it. And uh, a thumbs up never goes awry. Thank you all for watching.